We identified risk factors for allergic cross-reactivity among penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams. Now, let's distinguish between common types of superficial and necrotizing soft tissue infections, including causative pathogens. Here are some terminology of skin lesions that are helpful when discussing skin and soft tissue infections. So a macule, and you can see a picture of it here, is a flat circumstance area that is a change in the color of the skin. Now a papule is a small raised solid pimple or swelling often forming a part of a rash on the skin and typically inflamed but not producing pus. A vesicle is a small fluid filled sac, and a pustule is a small blister or pimple on the skin containing pus. So you can visibly see the pus here. And bulla, which some uh, would call it a blister, is a bubble-like cavity filled with air or fluid. And of course, crust is the dried serum, blood, or purulent exudate, which is typically the final phase of skin lesions. It's important to consider the anatomy of skin and soft tissue structure when discussing skin and soft tissue infection. So you can essentially think of uh, the layers here. So at the very top, we have skin. Under the skin is the subcutaneous tissue, and then under that there is muscle. Now within skin, we can think of epidermis and dermis. Epi means above, so epidermis is above dermis. And then in the subcutaneous tissue, we have superficial uh, fascia or fascia. And then under it, we have subcutaneous fat, nerves, and arteries and veins, and followed with, uh, you know, deep uh, fascia and of course muscle underneath. Now depending on what layer uh, you know you will we will talk about uh, specific infections based on uh, which how deep we go into the skin structure. Now empetigo or impetigo uh, characterized by erythematous uh, papules which then develop into vesicles and pustules with eventually uh, form a honey colored crust and this is uh, essentially in the epidermis layer. Ectima or ectema uh, essentially is similar to empatigo, uh, but it extends into the dermis skin layer. So it's still in the skin, but it's a bit, um, you know, deeper. Furuncle or a boil is an infection of the hair follicle that extends through the dermis and into the subcutaneous tissue. Carbuncle is infection involving several adjacent follicles that are deeper than furuncle. Uh, which typically drain pus from several orifices. An abscess is a collection of pus within the dermis and deeper layers of the skin. Cellulitis is an acute spreading inflammation of the epidermis, dermis, and possibly the superficial uh, fascia. It's characterized by erythema and edema of the skin that is not elevated and has poorly defined margins. Erysipelas is similar cellulitis but with a raised border and clearly demarcated margin. These infections are considered superficial in the sense that they are not necrotizing. When it comes to necrotizing soft tissue infection, uh, essentially we get deep into the skin tissue. Cellulitis is kind of unique because it can be superficial but it can also cross into deeper tissue so there you know uh, a small portion of cellulitis can be necrotizing uh, so it will be the necrosis of dermal and subcutaneous tissue uh, however once we go into the uh, fascia uh, we essentially label it as necrotizing fasciitis and when the muscle is involved uh, underneath uh, it's essentially a myonecrosis now, there are uh, different parts of the body that can have uh, different types of necrotizing um, soft tissue infections. Uh, so you can see on this picture. And there are different uh, you know, ways to classify this. So one method is to have type 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there are you know, some disagreements over this typing. Uh, but essentially, as of 2023, a proposed um, classification is that type 1 is essentially polymicrobial infection um, you know when it comes to necrotizing type 2 necrotizing uh, infections are monomicrobial so typically group a strep or staphylococcus aureus 
Type 3 is reserved for specifically for Vibrio vulnificus or Eromonas hydrophila and type 4 for fungal infections. All necrotizing infections are considered um, a, a medical uh, emergency, so they need uh, to essentially be evaluated by surgeons uh, urgently. And one thing that's important to understand about uh, pathophysiology of necrotizing soft tissue infections is the presence of toxins. So the two, uh, uh, two or three common organisms that cause necrotizing, you know, group A streptococcus, so this is um, Streptococcus pyogenes is known for uh, producing exotoxins and uh, you know when these toxins uh, essentially enter the tissue they can cause severe necrosis. Staphylococcus aureus, uh, you know some strains of Staphylococcus aureus can also uh, ex uh, exhibit exotoxins uh, as well as uh, cl some Clostridia species. So Clostridium Perferingens, for example, um, you know, produces exotoxins. And um, so, you know, what's to understand is that exotoxins have a role in, necro, uh, in uh, necrotizing skin infections. And that's something that we'll talk about when we talk about uh, selecting appropriate treatment. So we will need something with antitoxin effect. Now, because Staphylococcus aureus is often found on the skin, so it has a huge role in skin and soft tissue infections. Uh, so it's important to consider, in particular, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus or MRSA. Now, the good news is that the incidence of MRSA infections, in general, all infections, not just uh, skin and soft tissue infections, uh, in the hospital are actually declining year after year. Uh, so this was the 2019 CDC data that showed up to 2017 that, uh, you know, it's dropping. However, it's important to notice that uh, when you compare to other uh, in infections, that MRSA is actually pretty common. So, uh, you know, an estimated cases in hospitals patients in 2017 was over 300,000 cases, whereas C. diff was about 223,000. Uh, you know, ESV is 197. So you compare to other, uh, you know, bad um, organisms, uh, MRSA is pretty much, uh, uh, you know, more common. And when you consider estimated death, uh, you know, although more people have died from C. diff in 2017, still, you know, over 10,000 people have died as a result of MRSA infections. And that's all infections in general, not not necessarily skin and soft tissue infections, uh, just to emphasize the importance of MRSA when it comes to infections. Now with skin and soft tissue infections in particular, uh, we can kind of consider severity on a spectrum. So empatigo and um, ectema are very superficial. So empatigo is uh, in the epidermis and thymus into the dermis, right? So these are uh, pretty mild in general, um, and uh, you know they may be uh, less severe or even similar to purulent SSTI. So purulent, meaning that you know it doesn't matter what type of SSTI, it's uh, you know essentially um, producing pus. And most severe would be uh, necrotizing SSTIs that could lead to um, essentially. Uh, toxic shock syndrome and mortality. Now, empatigo um, is broken into bullous and non bullous empatigo. Uh, essentially, uh, most common cause of bullous empatigo is toxin producing Staphylococcus aureus, and most, most of these are actually MSSA, so we're not really concerned about MRSA specifically. Uh, non uh, could be due to beta hemolytic streptococci. So that's, you know, essentially group A strep, uh, you know, streptococcus pyogenes uh, or staph aureus or both. And that's still MSSA. So it's not necessary to cover MRSA uh, for these superficial infections. When it comes to, uh, I, 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 you know, I should mention this is the same for ectema as well. For purulent SSTIs, and some examples of purulent includes uh, furuncle, uh, carbuncle, and abscess, uh, this is primarily Staphylococcus aureus, and that could be MRSA, so MSSA or MRSA. With cellulitis or um, erysipelas, uh, it is mostly beta-hemolytic strep, uh, 
um, and rarely it can be group B or Staphylococcus aureus. And um, the most severe necrotizing uh, fasciitis, uh, that's typically due to beta hemolytic strep, and that's commonly due to MRSA, Aeromonas, or Vibrio vulnificus. And when there is, uh, you know, gas gangrene, uh, that's typically due to Clostridia species. So Clostridium perfringens is, um, you know, uh, one of the common causes of gas gangrene. Now, when we look at all skin and soft tissue infections in general, most typically, you know, collectively, most typical um, implications are due to Staph aureus and beta hemolytic strep. So you will see that the treatment is targeting these two organisms for the most part. Now, 80% of, uh, you know, culture positive infections are from these two. And when it comes to Staph aureus, community acquired MRSA, um, you know, is a big portion of it. And uh, sadly, when you look at some of the data, you will see that when you compare inappropriate antimicrobials to appropriate antimicrobials, when it comes to Staphylococcus aureus, uh, you know, a good portion of treatments have been inappropriate, meaning no coverage, uh, you know, either due to resistance or due to, um, you know, inappropriate selection of anti, uh, antimicrobials. And that was, uh, you know, the ones with this are statistically significant. So uh, less frequently implicated are, you know, gram negative organs. So in general, we're not really worried about gram negatives, uh, you know, anaerobes uh, and yeast. Now, with clinical presentation of skin and soft tissue infections, uh, you know, essentially the hallmarks are uh, erythema, uh, so uh, swelling, warmth, uh, induration, pain or tendon, tenderness at the site of infection, and for some of them that are purulent, you know, draining, um, you know, possible be coming from, from the wound. And they may be accompanied by signs and symptoms of a systemic illness, for example, there may be, you know, depending on the severity, there may be fever and chills, uh, diaphoresis, uh, malaise, or elements of SERS uh, criteria. And we will use these to actually, when we select treatment, we will label some of these as mild, moderate, or severe, which I will uh, discuss when I go over treatment.